Hello and welcome to NJ Biz Conversations. I'm your host, Jeff Kanaj. My guest today is Taina Perez. She is the executive director of Teach for New Jersey, Teach for America, New Jersey. Taina, welcome. Hi, Jeff. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Oh, thanks for joining me. I should also note that Taina was also an honoree on our Education Power 50 list, number two in the top 10. So congratulations for that. Thanks so much for the honor. It meant so much. Good. I'm glad to hear it. Um, you well deserved. Um, but we're talking today about the education, education, New Jersey, teaching in New Jersey, since since that's what you do. We're about a year into a, mo a year, a month into the school year. So I want to hear a little bit about how's it, how it's going as far as you're concerned. But first, I, I want to hear about the organization. I think most of my viewers have heard of Teach for America. It's a very prominent organization, very well known. Um, but I'd like to hear from you about what you do. Um, your, your mission is to find, develop, and support equity-oriented leaders to transform education and expand opportunity for all children. Very, very high-minded. high, high minded. What does that mean in practical terms? What is your day-to-day -day like? What do you do? When, Jeff, we should bring you on staff. That was perfect. You got the mission <laughs> right on. Um, you know, it is exactly what you said. And what I would, what I would offer is that we believe that all children are are, have equal potential, right? They have every gift within them. They can be great, they can be wonderful, but unfortunately um, the obstacles in front of them that are not their fault, right? It is not their fault, um, the zip code that they were born in or the race that they were born into, and that should not predetermine how their potential pans out, right? Every child can be successful. And so we think about this idea of like, potential is, is limitless, but right now opportunity is not. And so we believe that if we recruit leaders, right? We recruit, we develop, and we place them in schools to have a transformational experience academically for children, um, that it will start to shift the systems that be to show that we can really fix this thing that all kids deserve the exact same education, right? Um, and, and we believe that this, this, this first two years that you do with us is really just the first two years of your journey. We believe that what then happens is you're building up a, just a battalion of leaders, right? Who are thinking about how is it that we're gonna bring educational equity about within the classroom, also outside of the classroom. And so we've got alumni of our program. They're 1800 alumni strong in New Jersey specifically. And many of them stay in the classroom. They're now veteran teachers, 15, 20, 25 years in, some become principals, superintendents, others um, take the route of getting elected to their school boards to try to bring about policy change that way. Others are working in the DOE. And so we really think that it's going to take a, a group of, of like-minded folks, right, who believe that equity is possible um, to, to really shift, shift the system. And in New Jersey, locally, um, we have about 100 uh, first and second year teachers that are placed in Newark, Patterson and Camden, who are doing work across 40 schools um, with our alumni, with veteran teachers who are not part of Teach for America and really trying to move the needle. All right. So, so you're putting what, your, your folks, teachers, into, uh, you, you listed three districts among the most, most troubled, most vulnerable um, districts in the state. That, that's really what you're talking about is getting, trying to get good people into those districts. Is that right? Right, and and also taking taking these folks, these leaders who are hungry, who are ready, right? Who are thinking about what does it mean to build community and placing them in communities where one, we do have a presence already with our alumni, okay. but also having them work with um, folks from the community locally, right? And so we really focus with them on like, what does it mean to partner with the veteran teacher down the hallway? What does it mean to partner with the, the community-based organization that supports your school? We believe strongly in relationship building. We believe that like Teach for America is not the panacea, right? We know at this point, I think we know that the way systems systems issues um you know, come about is it's not going to take one thing. It's not like a, a one a one issue problem. And so we know that we're not the panacea, but our goal is to really think about like, what are our gifts? What are our talents? And how do we integrate into the community? How do we work and lock arms with the community to bring about change? Okay. Well, well what I hear you saying is that really the community is the key. I mean, even in a, even in a city sort of as large as Newark, for example, you, you still are, are working in what, what you, what I imagine you want to be relatively tight knit communities that, that are, that are brought together in large part by the school that's in that community. Absolutely, right? We think about like, what is the ecosystem that surrounds our kids, right? And so you talked about Newark in particular, that is the largest school system, right, in right. in New Jersey. And so it's important that we're not in a vacuum, right? And so we do work with um, the city council, for example, we do a backpack event, you know, our second annual backpack event, where we give um, backpacks and supplies to the community. We're also working with the mayor in his 10 point literacy program. We work with um, the first African American owned bookstore in Newark, right? Because we know that literacy is so critical and so important. And so 
episode is really thinking about how do we how do we know who's in the community, who are the mm -hmm. players, who are the power players, and how do they know us, right? And where do we find that synergy? And so, yeah, community is is at its base level how we're going to move move forward. Okay. Now, in in any, you mentioned power players in the community. In many communities, the power player maybe is a local business person, uh, someone who owns or runs a business. Um, how what is the how has been the response to the business community in some of the places where where you're working? Are you are you happy with with what the way businesses have have stepped up? Absolutely. And and I related to like... the to the next question, what I really want to talk about, but I do want to I want to hear a, list, a little bit about this about about how businesses react to the kinds of work that you're doing. Absolutely. And I, I think I know the next question, so I won't give it all right now. But, um, you know, this idea of businesses, uh, businesses are so much the heart of the community, right? Particularly local right. businesses. Um, you find people who have been established for 30, 40, 50 years, right? They're the heartbeat. Um, and so, like, when I think about source of knowledge, right? And I think about um, Patrice and Masani, who are doing amazing work, um, you know, as, as like the local book start is the epicenter of, of Newark in so many ways. We do like a silent book reading where we just kind of like pull out folding chairs and get in the street and we all just read, right? Our new teachers, our staff, um, community members, uh, we think about what does it mean to frequent in, in frequent local businesses in the area, right? We think about, um, you know, just putting, you know, our, you know, like, bringing ourselves like our full selves how do we live how do we work how do we play right in the communities where we're also right. serving and i think that's really important to just show like how interconnected we really are okay well, that's interesting and then the, the the larger question the overarching question why businesses should be interested in in, in what yeah. you're doing and the work you're doing we hear over and over again i hear it all the time <laughs> whenever i ask people about uh, business people about why they why they um why they work in new jersey why they located in new jersey why they stay in new jersey among the first answers they give is the quality of the education system yeah so the question i always have for people like you folks who are actually in the system is that view justified <laughs> does new jersey have the kind of system that would justify that, that view that that makes it an advantage that makes it a selling point for yeah. you know, choose New Jersey and the governor and whoever else to go out and try to get people to to come here. Is does the educational system live up to the reputation that uh, business le that government leaders and business leaders would like to project? And I think it's it's super nuanced, right? Um, you know, I always look at the, the the ratings, and we always kind of toggle between Massachusetts and Connecticut, between being right. like in the top three for education. Um, and I think that is true for 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 some kids in New Jersey. That is very true. Okay. We have over six hundred districts in our very right. small state, which is really right. interesting to begin with. And so, yeah, that that is part of of the reality for some kids but unfortunately when we dig a little bit a little bit deeper we're seeing that there's it's actually much more nuanced right it is not unfortunately in the top three for all kids um and then also i think that we have to put this on the national scale of what does it mean okay. to be top three and so right. we look at our nape scores and nape is is basically it's the report card for the nation right it's the way that we we can compare children in new jersey to children in alabama to hawaii etc and 40 percent of third graders um just a year or two ago scored um proficient 42% of third graders were proficient third grade readers. And so the question I ask is, is that enough? Even for kids who education seems to be working for, is it enough that not even half of our third graders in the entire state are proficient third grade readers? And that that gets us to be in the top three for education, right? Okay. Um, and I, I think I would juxtapose it as well with like, um, what I what I know is also the conversation of like, this is a great state. There, this, you know, between our parks, yes, some of the education systems, the infrastructure, um, to the diversity, this, this is what makes it great. And I think that we also have to look like to what's coming. And so I saw a McKenzie report that I thought was really interesting that really tied to business, right? And it was talking about um, how New Jersey is poised to create 130,000 jobs over the next mm -hmm. decade. And that's going to be in, like administrative services, management services, business, insurance, finance, science, um, transportation. I mean, all of these different places. And right. what's interesting is like, not only are we growing, but we're actually growing these sectors and we're out pacing the rest of the nation mm -hmm. but what is also true and i've heard a lot of businesses talk about this is that they're starting to feel a widening talent shortage and so the question becomes how do we look at education to not only just get kids to high school and be done but like this is like we are literally creating the workforce of tomorrow and so i think it's a really i think it's a critical time and i think we have a lot of the right conditions to kind of all get together and stop and be like how do we actually all attend to what's happening to children who are just entering at five years old and really looking at like 
you know, what is their trajectory to get to high school so that when they're ready to go to college, when they're ready to enter the workforce, are they ready to take the jobs that, that people will retire from and also take the jobs that we will be creating at a huge pace over the next 10 years? Right. Well, at least we hope so, because the economic growth d depends on that. So it is true, uh, right. that, that's that's a, an, ex an interesting point. So uh, I'm curious, then, what what do you consider the biggest challenges that, that you and your organization face? I mean, you mentioned the 600 school districts. And, and a lot of folks, um, a lot of experts, a lot of there's been a lot of debate over whether that's too many. Is it is the is the system too fragmented? But mm -hmm. but I, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I'm interested in hearing from you what you think your organization. Where do you think you you need to focus your energies? Absolutely. So this is something that we've done a lot of thinking about, and we kind of we were like, well, how do we approach this really macro problem? Right. And so part of the like, part of the endeavor was actually like, we just got to get close to community, right? I'm going to keep saying this idea of community. And so we started interviewing. Um, I mean, we interviewed almost um, over 800 people over a few years. It was students, um, principals, school leaders, parents, elected officials. We were just trying. We were looking at surveys that we had done that other folks had done, and what we were realizing was. Um, there was something around third grade reading and I want to come back to this piece around like there was something about reading that like if we actually don't mm -hmm. attend to getting our youngest learners our eight and nine year olds to a place of being whole they are actually already on a trajectory to not making it and so we know that um, research has shown that there is a strong correlation between third grade reading and high school success and actually like if you were a proficient or above proficient third grade reader it actually a really strong leading indicator for high school graduation and okay. high school and college graduation right mm -hmm. and so we are really focused right now is like not only are we going to make sure that we're continuing to bring teachers into the field because there's also a teaching shortage and so if we're trying to build the workforce of tomorrow yet we don't have educators it's something we need to think about and so and, and layering that on to this idea of like what are the factors that we really believe we can focus in on for third grade reading and so while we're we're um, attending to the teaching shortage, we're also thinking about how do we strengthen educator development around how we're training our teachers to be stronger readers? How are we shoring up our data systems around early childhood and kindergarten and first grade and second grade so we're not surprised when we get to third grade? How are we making sure that we're bringing in more teachers into the fold? And how are we thinking about like, how is it that we think about the curriculum that we've been using? And so we're working and locking arms with a lot of other organizations that are doing this work. We were just part of um, Jersey Can's Legacy of Literacy Coalition led by Paula White, which did some amazing work with Senator Ruiz, who's really been um, a clarion caller, quite frankly, around what it means to attend to what, how are our kids doing? And so she was able to draft legislation that just passed, it was just signed by Governor Murphy, that really for the first time put a stake in the ground around literacy. And so you talk about the 600 plus districts. And so yeah, that meant that 600 plus districts were kind of attacking literacy their own way. And we're not saying that everything needs to be uniform, but we need to put in some guardrails, we need to put in some parameters. And so now what we know is that we're, you know, the legislation will, will make sure that there is strong professional development for teachers around literacy, that we're thinking about um, having every school have an early literacy screener, right? And that's going to be a game changer. And so we know that what happens in Newark will be the same that happens like just a few miles down the road in Montclair, for example. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get to that in a minute, but I just want to point out for viewers that, and there's a link to, there'll be a link to this, uh, to this, what I'm going to mention. I, so I spoke to Paula White um, a few months ago, I guess, about some of these very same issues. And for viewers who are interested in that, it's, a, it's also a really good discussion. You should, you should check that out. There'll be a link to the, um, to, to that video in, in the, in the post accompanying uh, this one. Um, th but I, I want to get back to then, um, the, 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 the issue that you're talking about in, in third grade readers, where should the leadership come from? I mean, it's your organization, certainly, but where do you look for? Is it, is it really the local communities, the local school boards? The, what role does the state have to play? Where do you see those actors fitting into to the kinds of things that you're talking about? Yeah, I, I and I think when I, I I don't want to speak for so many folks, but what I've seen, right? And when I think about what I've seen work, yes, from, from it, your experience and in, in your organization's perspective, your perspective as someone who's working in this field, what I've seen work is that it it is a marriage almost of like grass tops and grassroots, right? And I think what is also clear is that we we're kind of like, oh, I don't want to step on toes. This person should do it, but actually, like. We all have our strengths and we all can move at different speeds in the work that we do. And so I think what it's gonna be is like, what is the clarity of, of, of um, what your organization or what your entity can do really well, right? And so we think about our elected officials. And so they did the work. They did the work of talking to legislators. They did the work of talking to the community. Like we can pass these bills, we can do this work. And then I would say like, 
is it appropriate, right, for, for them to be in the schools? Probably not, but there are folks, right, who know, who understand, who develop teachers, like this is their craft. And so it's like, how are we talking to each other? How are we building those relationships to be like, okay, this is what's happening. This is what we're hearing. So now let me now take this. Let me take this and be like, okay, this is what that will look like, right? Okay. I work and I supervise principals. I can work with my principals. I know how to invest. It's then principals, right, who are really great at thinking about how do I take something that I'm hearing and how do I operationalize it in my classroom, right? It is the um, it is the CBO who's coming in, right? Who does professional development for teachers? It's like I hear you're doing this thing. We do this really well, and so I think that there is opportunity for synergy. But what I will say is, at the the nexus and the crux of this is that we have to be talking. We have to be getting into conversation. We have to not be afraid um, of difficult conversations. We have to not be afraid of what the past and the legacy and people before us may have left. But say we can actually um, show a model. And I think New Jersey is prime. New Jersey is actually, for me at least, when I've done research, been a state where we we actually, I think, have shown what it means to not be of the same political parties, not be of the same um, communities, but find a way, find a way to come together to move something. And I think literacy can be that, right? I think that you're seeing, when you see the mayor um, saying one thing in Newark, and then you hear the head of Newark Public Library saying something else, and then you hear the executive director of Reading Partners who's coming in to um, bring a tutoring program saying the same thing it is showing that folks are talking and they are invested in the same outcome and just because the steps to get there are not exactly the same does not mean that we can't really lean into okay what am i hearing how can we move how can you move and how can we find that middle ground to to move forward not for ourselves not for our own gratification but because really kids are on the line here okay all right. I, I, I don't want to turn you into a lobbyist, but I do want to see if there's if there's if there are any policy changes that that you that would help make that process easier for you. I mean, are there are there things that that either state, local or county governments could or should be doing um, that, that would that would facilitate the kind of work? Because, I, I you know, listening to you, you that, that statistic about 42 percent of, of proficient reading at, at third grade level is really I mean, that's going to be frightening to a lot of people, I think, if we've never heard it before. Are there policy changes that, that you, you think are um, would help? your work. I mean, I think right now the policy changes that we're seeing, there's been a lot of movement around like teacher certification, right, getting more people into field. There's been a lot of um, policy movement already about their reading. I, I would say, especially for your viewers, right, what I think right. about, what I would leave them with at this point is that like, I think it's it's the people on the ground at this point that are going to make this movement, right? And so right. what I would offer is like, get plugged in, you know, understand what's coming through the legislature. But then I imagine too, like, kind of like ask your own your own child's school, what are you doing? What does this look like? What will this mean for us? How will we need to like, what, what, what role will the PTA play? What role will the school board play? Because I think that's actually where we see the, the unit of change happen is mm -hmm. when like, as a community, we can get our arms around it. I also think like, you know, if I, I know that you um, speak to a lot of folks in business. And so again, mm -hmm. I, I kind of go back to what I said a few minutes ago. I, I think I think we're at a tipping point now um, where businesses uh, can play a larger role in education, right? They can think about like, how are we actually looking to the workforce that's coming? Where can we make investments? Um, where can we, you know, lend power either in people or capital or whatever that looks like. But I think we're at a place now where, um, you know, it, it's that it's that fine line of like, where how, how do we operate? But it, but at its core, um, Teach America started, you know, not in the political space. And we started just really as a just a scrappy group of folks, right, who uh, 35 years ago wanted to see some change. And, and I think that that was a blueprint from what we've seen. And that is just the story of our country, right? It is a group of scrappy people who believe that better is to come and find a way to make that happen. It is literally the blueprint that we see over and over. And that's what, make, that's what makes our country great, right? That's what makes America, America. Okay. And for, for business owners or executives watching now who want to get involved, best thing for them to do is to, to get involved in the local community, the local school, either where they live or where their business is located. That's, that's absolutely. that should be the, the path for them. I think so. Absolutely. I do some research on, you know, who are the education organizations doing work right now, right? Is Teach for America a part? Um, is Reading Partners, you know, active? Uh, what is, what is the educational arm of like, what, what is Jersey can doing and what does that look like in my community? So I think it is, it's a landscape analysis, right? To your point of like where, it's also where I live, but also where I conduct business. Right. Who are the players? Who are the folks that I should try to get plugged into? Um, it really is the first place to start. Um, and, and I think Teach for, you know, if folks want to learn more about Teach for America, um, they can go to teachforamerica.org, of course, um, forward slash New Jersey, if they want to learn specifically about the work that we're doing here and want to get okay, connected. Well 
we'll have those links available too for anyone who wants to see. Finally, before I let you go, I, I, given all of this, <laughs> given what you're saying, and, and I hear the, the the dedication, the passion in your voice, though, I'm I'm curious though, what you think of the future? Are you optimistic? Is is that reputation that we talked about at the outset for for having a good education system is that in danger? Are these are these problems that deep? I, again, I go back to that literacy statistic. What do you think? <laughs> does New Jersey have what it takes to to get to where um, they that uh, to to either maintain what where we are at least where we are now, which is as you say third in the nation, although that's maybe damning with faint praise given all given uh, all the other things you've talked about. What do you think of the future? How do you how do you view um, where we're going? Yeah. Um... I, I am optimistic, right? I think this idea of like, you got to confront the brutal facts, but but we have like, I'm seeing change, right? Like even just in these last six months, this legislation, this like, you know, we're planting a flag around literacy. That's a huge indicator, right? Yeah. We're seeing some schools in some of our districts, um, they reported double digits increase in reading proficiency. Okay. So, it, you know, it is it is happening in small ways. We're just needing to get connected. We're needing for folks to talk to like, how did you do it? How do I do it? Um, I believe strongly that New Jersey can be the standard um, and not just in a numerical way, not just first, second or third, but there's, there's a lot of great things. Like when your mayor, you know, who is dealing with so many different things, like, nope, we're going to have a specific 10 point literacy plan. And we're seeing a lot of that happening in many different cities across New Jersey. It is showing that folks are ready. Folks are, are looking to put aside whatever issues we may have had. But I believe strongly that, that we can be a standard for the nation on what it means um, to, to turn the ship and that it wasn't a miracle. It wasn't like something that like, you know, was there was magic or somebody behind, you know, a cloak, if you will, but that like, we're going to show like, here are the best practices and change isn't linear, change doesn't happen overnight. We just have to stay the course, but we can do this and we will do it. Okay. Well, uh, that that's a good place to leave it on that kind of optimistic note. <laughs> so, so that if people do want to get involved, they don't have to throw up their hands and say there's nothing I can do. They'll they'll uh, they'll they'll look at your organization and, and schools and in in their communities and, and hopefully get involved. So, we will leave it there. Taina Perez, Executive Director of Teach for America New Jersey. Thank you very much for joining me. I really appreciate you taking the time. This is a this is a critical issue for New Jersey and and the business community and the and the state in general. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thanks, Jeff. And thank you for watching. Until next time, stay safe, everyone.